Hello and welcome back everyone. Today we're going to be learning about the three forms of a linear equation. We're going to be first talking about slope-intercept form, what that means, what it entails, and what we can do with it. We're going to learn, secondly, another good form to use is the point-slope form. In some cases, it's going to be more beneficial. And lastly, we're going to learn about our standard form and how nice and neat it's going to come out. First, we're going to start talking about slope-intercept form. The name gives away what we're going to be working with. We're going to be working with a slope, and we are going to be working with an intercept. Okay? More specifically, we'll work with a y-intercept, and we'll talk about that here in just a second. Second formula that we're going to use, or different form of a linear equation, is point slope form. Okay, with a point, you're going to have an ordered pair that we're going to be dealing with, an x and a y. Okay, and then we're also going to be dealing with our slope of m. Okay, the y-intercept back in slope-intercept form can also be formulated as b as well. This is what we're going to talk about in just a second. And then lastly is our standard form, and this one is sort of the oddball out of all of them, and you're going to ask yourself, why do we even need this? But it's going to come in handy when we tar start talking about x and y intercepts and finding them. So heading directly into our notes, 12-3 are the forms of linear equations. There are three different forms that we're going to be talking about. Again, we talked about slope-intercept form, how we're going to have an m, and we're going to have a b. Okay, we talked about point-slope form, where we need some point, which is actually going to be represented as this x1 and y1, and then also a slope. And then lastly is this standard form, and these three numbers are going to come into play, a, b, and c. And actually, later on, I'm going to show you how to actually transfer between the three different forms and show you that they're all actually equal with the same and the right numbers. Okay, so first one, slope-intercept form. Slope-intercept form is, is pretty straightforward because you're given the slope and you're given the y-intercept. So first of all, remember slope is always denoted by this m. So m is always going to be equal to slope. The second part is this y-intercept. If you look on any graph, and if I graphed a line going up in this direction, the y-intercept is at the point at which it crosses the y-axis. So this point right in there is going to be our y-intercept. Now if I went up and down here and drew different lines, you'd see that in every ordered pair there's going to be a zero, comma, some number, which we're going to denote as b. Zero will always be the x value because along the y axis we didn't move any place on the x axis, so it's always going to be zero. So zero, comma, b is the y intercept. Okay, so if we're looking back here, 0 comma b is the y-intercept, so this is our y-intercept, and this is our slope. Moving on to point-slope form, if we have y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Now, it may seem pretty confusing, but again, it's going to be very straightforward, very easy to remember. This m value, again, is always going to be our slope. It's starting to see a pattern. Okay, the second part, we have an x1 and a y1. Everybody see that up here? our x1 and y1 are actually going to be the ordered pair of x1 and y1. This is a point that falls on this line. So x1 and y1 is the point that crosses on the line. Lastly, let's take a look at standard form. Standard form is the most interesting out of all of them because we're dealing with special numbers in this case. If you think back to unit 4, we had a bunch of different sets of numbers we had integers, we had whole numbers, rational, irrational. A, B, and C are all going to be integers. Okay, And if you think back, integers are whole numbers and opposites. Now what that means is that we have a, say that we have a negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. It goes in either direction forever. Okay, these are the numbers that we're going we're to be working with. So A, B, and C are all integers. So A, B, and C must be integers. And A, in particular, must be positive. Those are just sort of the characteristics of standard form. Now, in a minute, I'm going to show you how to find slope of standard form, and then I'm going to go into detail of actually explaining why we can find slope this way. 
So remember, slope intercept form, a slope is m, so the number beside the x. Our b is our y intercept. Point slope form, we have a slope, which is denoted by m. Okay? And then we have a point that's x1 and y1. This is our point. And then lastly, standard form, a, b, and c must be integers, and a must be positive. So finding slope of ax plus by equals c is actually very simple. I'm going to give you the shortcut method first, and then I'm going to show you in more detail how to actually solve it after we do some examples. The slope is going to actually be m is equal to negative a over b. And that has to deal with when we actually go and solve for our slope value or when we solve for the coefficient that's in front of x when we put it into slope intercept form. m is equal to opposite a over b. So a is right here and b is right here. So we take whatever numbers they are, take a, flip it on top, make it negative or make it the opposite, okay? and then take b and put it on the bottom and that will give us our slope of m. As we get into some examples here, there are three things that I want you to remember. All right? We have our first form, which is slope-intercept form. We have our second form, which is point-slope. And we have our third form, which is standard. First thing I'd like you to do is go through and try and figure out which ones these match up to. You can match them up with our three examples from before. Our standard form is still listed up here. I'll write down the slope-intercept form. Slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b. And then our point slope is y2, or y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. We're trying to figure out which form up here matches to these equations down here. So in this first one, we're just identifying, we're not looking for slope yet, we're just identifying the form of each equation. This first one, which, was, which one does it match up to? Slope intercept, point slope, or standard? Good, it matches up with point slope. So I'm just gonna put a P dash S. Okay, we're gonna come back to slope in just a second. Number two, which one does it look like? Good, standard form. Standard form, because we look here, this is our A, our B, and our C. That's what it looks like. If X and Y are on the same side, typically it's going to be standard form, and that's what we can look for. Number three, one, two, or three. Good. This is our slope-intercept form. We have our Y equals our M, X plus B. Number four. All right, that's also standard form. Number five. Good, slope-intercept form. Okay, and number six, point slope. Okay, now we're going to go back through and actually find the slope for each one of these. Some of these are going to be very straightforward. You're going to be able to pick it out in an instance. Okay. If you look at our first one, y minus 4 is equal to negative 2 times the quantity of x plus 5. Now, if we're looking at our point slope form, which is this form up here, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Where is our slope located? Our slope is located at this m. So our m value is on the outside of our parentheses. So negative 2 is therefore our slope. And that's it. That's all you have to do. Pick out the slope using that formula. Number 2, we're looking at standard form. Now standard form, we're actually going to have to use this formula right here. m equals opposite a over b. So if you use that formula, a is 2, but what's the opposite of it? negative 2, dividing by b, which is 3. And that's it. That's our slope. So there's using that formula right there. And number 3, y equals 4x minus 17. m I've already located right here is this 4. 4 is our slope. So m equals 4. Go ahead and do these following ones. I'm going to reveal the answers here in just a second. So if you want to pause the video at this time before I go over the answers. Okay, ready to check them. If we're looking here, we have 3x minus 4y equals 10. Again, this is in standard form, so we're going to have to use this formula. So m equals opposite a. 3 is our a, so we've got to use the opposite, which is negative 3, divided by, but here we look at our 4, but remember, if we have a minus 4 in front of it, we have to use that, take that minus 4 with it, so this becomes a negative 4. 
So m in this case is equal to three fourths. Good job. Okay, number five. Slope intercept form, this one's easy. We just circle the one half. m is equal to one half. And this is point slope form, yet another easy one to find slope. So m is equal to two thirds. And this just as a recap of today's lesson. We are going to be looking at three forms of our equations of our lines. So there are three forms that we want to look for. Okay, the first one is slope intercept form. Okay, the second one is point slope. And our last one is our standard form. In each of these, we want to be looking for how we can figure out what slope is or find a slope. So in slope intercept and point slope, it's very straightforward. It's our m value. So wherever our m is, that's going to be our slope. So you pick out your slope by just identifying the number next to either the x or next to the parentheses with the x. And lastly, in standard form, we have our formula of m equals opposite a over b. Okay, so here are three forms of our linear equations. If you have any, stay tuned for the next video where I explain more in depth of where standard form comes from, how we can solve for our m by solving for our y value in this case. So if you want to click on that video, it's coming up next. And thank you for watching. This is Mr. Korb. Have a nice day.